global launch day for Marvel Future Revolution. Yes, it is released all over the world. No more VPNs required to play this thing. And if you want to start to play Marvel Future Revolution right now, we are talking about some tips to get you started off on the right foot in this video. And if you're ready for that, guys, find that like button. And let's go smash it. Alley flying. What is up, Valley Maniacs? I am Valley of Lion. It is exciting global launch day for Marvel Future Revolution, a day that we've been waiting for for so long. You can finally play this with no VPNs if you're not in Canada right now. And in this video, we're talking about how to get you started off on the right foot. What are some mistakes that I've made? What are some good things that I did? And this way, you guys can know exactly what to do and what not to do when you're starting off your account. So let's get into the game right now without further ado. Let's talk about a few things. So ways that you could play Android, iOS, they're both available there. And if you want to play on your PC, you can do this. You're going to need an emulator, though, and you're going to need to use. I use the I'm using uh, LD player with a lot more success. Some people are using BlueStacks with a little more success. Those are my two emulators that I recommend, and you can get both of them with the links down below. Uh, and see which one works better for you. I know they're a little temperamental, but uh, the big tip here, though, guys, because some people are uh, claiming it's not working, make sure you use the 64-bit version. If you're using a 32-bit version, the game will not work. So make sure you use the 64-bit version. Either BlueStacks, LD Player. I, I like LD Player a little better, but I know some people like uh, BlueStacks. All right, next is your characters. As you can see here, you get all these characters to start off with. Now, you get four four initially that you can start off with so picking the right one is very important you could unlock the rest of these slots in the store there's a there's a other the the selector that you could get for i, I believe it's 400 crystals for each one so each of these slots you could unlock uh and as far as the best characters the one i could recommend is either black widow or dr strange i think those are the two top starting characters as far as ease of use there's some other characters that do uh well and based on your style of play, they could be a little better than Doctor Strange or Black Widow. But Black Widow has some high damage, goes into stealth, makes her very yeah, difficult to hit. So in PvP content like Omega Wars and some of your dimensional duels, she's going to dominate. Same thing with Doctor Strange. Uh, I, as you can see, went hard on Captain America as my first character. Probably would not recommend him for newer players. Does not have a lot of damage. He needs to be right up against the enemies in order to do damage. And some enemies, that makes it very challenging. That maestro stage, call on those raids are a little hard for Captain America. So a little more advanced type of concept. And I don't know if you really need a tank in the game right now. So I don't know if I'd recommend him. Uh, Storm is a good character, plays very similar to Doctor Strange, doesn't have as much survivability, but has a lot of damage and has that range attack too. She's also a flyer, so good choice if you like that type of uh, game style. Star-Lord does a lot of similar things to Iron Man and Captain Marvel. He relies a little more on debuffs, but he's another flying character, relies more on blast damage. Iron Man is probably the third character that I would recommend for newer players. Uh, people that have used Iron Man says that he's very, very fun to use. Uh, it does some high damage, a little squishy. So uh, keep that in mind if you're choosing Iron Man. But very good starting character. Very fun to play with as well. Same thing with Spider-Man. I don't have a lot of experience with Spider-Man. But people that have used Spider-Man, this is a lot of damage. Dodges relies on that. And then Captain Marvel will be similar to Star-Lord. Uh, not relying as much on the debuff. So that's, that's it as far as characters. Now, this game does get pretty competitive, guys. And uh, nobody knows about that competition more than the sponsor of this video, Worldwide Nutrition. And guys, if you want to get uh, some of the best subs on the planet and um, check out Worldwide Nutrition. They've been serving uh, consumers since 2010 and they were combined in power science and nature to provide you with the right nutritional supplements so you can achieve your goals. And they just launched this product, Blitz which is designed for gamers, by gamers. It helps you with your focus, your mental energy, clarity, cognitive functions, and doesn't give you a lot of the side effects that other uh, uh, products do. So Blitz, awesome product. It'll help you keep those long hours of playing Future Revolution. Comes in two great flavors, gummy candy and 
cherry lime. So both of these flavors are very good. Uh, check it out right now, guys. Go to WorldWideNutrition.com. Use the checkout code VALLEYFLYING, and you can get 15% off your entire order. And of course, with always free shipping for orders over $100, guys. So there's no reason not to go in. Head over to WorldWideNutrition.com right now. And let them help you start changing your life. Go from dad bod to dad god. Let's go into the uh, back into the game, though. And let's talk about what you can do once you've selected your character. I'm going to show you Captain America. Like I said, not not really highly recommended, but I, I chose him because I like the moves. Let's talk about uh, ways that you could upgrade your characters. What you could do to uh, build your character. There's two actually levels that you have. You have a level for each of your individual characters. So your Captain Americas, your Black Widows. All of these characters have individual levels. And if we go into the selection screen here for the menu, uh, we could check out that individual hero and check out the individual info for our, our heroes. So Captain America will have one. Each of your characters will have one. If you chose Black Widow, you'll have one is here. This is the characters level. Level 100 right now is the max for each character. Uh, you have a different squad level that you could... Uh, rank up and we're going to talk about this squad level in just a little bit but ways to get your character stronger as you can see right now my captain america 537k power pretty pretty strong if you're a newer player but of course there's there's a lot of players that have over a million uh, power in their characters all right so the main ways that you could upgrade your characters uh is with the gear the uniform and if you want the stats from the uniform this is where you're gonna select it so this is this is one of the stronger hats that I have, the or the helmets that I have, the New Stark City helmet, and this regional gear. I also have a New Stark City shield. This regional gear has the best stats in the game. So we have a two set bonus for this here. It gives him extra defense. If we had three pieces, we would also get extra HP. Uh, and then we, since we don't have any other regional gear, very hard to get. If you get any of these, do not dismantle them. As you can see, they come with these locks on them. Make sure you don't unless uh, accidentally unlock them and then sell these because these regional pieces, the New Stark City, Xanderth, Hydra America, uh, Sakaar, the rest of them, very, very valuable. And the rest of the that we have on here is a modern suit. The reason I have that is it also has more defensive bonuses as well. So uh, we have a two set bonus here, two set bonus here. What you're going to get for your stats is the costume that you equip here. What you're going to see visually is all the costumes that you have in this customization section. So you have all these different parts. You can mix and match them. You have different themes. Of course, to unlock the different themes, though, you have to have all the parts of the character. And uh, yes, there's, there's a lot of different uh, uh, suits here that you could choose for each of your characters. We got a few new ones at Global Launch. Some of the steampunk suits, the Rise of the East suits. And then we also had uh, each character got their own uh, unique look there. But as far as the stats, these do not matter. This is just what you're getting from a visual standpoint. So you can change the look here. You could change the stats here. Very important to upgrade these. I only have uh, five star uh, sets of these. Obviously, six star is even better. And then uh, new a new thing that they just got added with Global Launch. You could actually uh, get more stars on these, uh, the Red Star system. A little different than Strike Force if you're coming over for that game. And then you also have your battle badges. Uh, you get these just from doing random missions. These are random drops. This one I got from the Maestro Blitz. This one I got from a uh, Modoc Blitz. Different things here, or, or maybe not a Modoc Blitz, a Dark a Dimensional Duel. Dimensional Duel. But anyway, um, you're getting these different sets. Now you cannot upgrade these badges. So the badge that you get is pretty much it. Uh, a lot of times what I end up doing is dismantling these badges. So if we go into our inventory here and check out the badges that we have in our inventory, a lot of these badges are not going to be usable. You could only equip these badges. Now with these, the rest of these, like these six star badges, they're pretty good badges. They're hard to get. So instead of dismantling these hard to get badges, I'm going to put them in my squad storage and save them for my other characters. But the rest of these, we're going to, we're going to not equip. No, we're going to dismantle some of these. So gonna do is go here we're gonna dismantle everything that's one two three stars a lot of times what i also end up doing is these four star upgrades but there's there's some pretty good four stars that you might want to keep especially early on and then after that once i've got all these i'm gonna go to my squad storage here and i'm just gonna save whatever badges i don't need for my other characters normally i would just select all of these and put those in but that's one way that you could upgrade your character you also have these cores so as you notice some of these badges here as you get to certain levels, have these cores that you could equip. So if I select a core here, this badge is not equipped, so it doesn't have any cores on here. But if I select a core here, 
I could have put more dodge rate, more defense up. And as, as these stats go up based on the stars that you have. So the cores are kind of a way that you can upgrade the badges. But what you get from the badges is pretty much it. So uh, that is that is a way to upgrade there. You also have stats from other places. Let's go into our uh, stats section here. And let's look at our squad power. And there's other ways that you get out. Oh, here we go. The details. Any players that has details, it'll tell you what the total stats are. So this is the total stats of my Captain America. Like I said, the costume, the, the one that you have equipped on that top section is what the stats that you're going to get from that costume. The battle badges that we talked about, those can't really upgrade them, but you could use different cores in them. You could dismantle them. And some really good ones, some highly coveted ones, you want to save them in your squad storage for your other characters. Your title, as you go through the campaign mission, which is what you need to do as you start off your mission, uh, you're going to get different uh, titles. That's going to give you extra attack, defense, HP. Gives a little extra stats, not a lot as you can see here, but every little stat adds up the potential. This is something that's very, very rare. You're going to get a lot of these as you're going through the campaign missions. When you're done with the campaign missions, though, after you get to level 100, it's very rare that you're getting this potential. So we're going to talk about that, but you're also getting stats from here. Uh, you could increase different levels of stats as you increase your uh, character's potential. You could kind of choose what you want to upgrade, what stats you want to upgrade from the character. And it's each character has a little different stats that they could upgrade with their potential. The squad power, this is your entire squad. So this is like a global effect that you're going to have for your entire account for your squad. And these stats are going to go go across the board for all of your characters. So as you're leveling up your second, third character, these it's going to get a little easier because you should have your squad leveled up and have a little few, uh, some extra stats from the squad power. Omega cards, these are, these are very RNG based. They drop at certain times. They drop in the uh, dark zone. They drop in the normal regions. You you uh, when you're battling these uh, main bosses or prime bosses, you get different cards that drop. Some are better than others. We're gonna go into that in just a little bit. Talk about the cards, but this is another major area that you could upgrade your characters. Your alliance, as you join an alliance, you get different stats, and the alliance can upgrade different stats for each of your each of the alliance members, and that's a global bonus for all of the alliance members as well. So that is a good uh, thing as well. And then specialization. This comes, I believe this comes at level 70. And you could you could customize your character a little more. You could uh, put on certain stats on there. So let's go back out here. Well, we'll come back to this squad power. I do want to cover the cards. So let's go back to the cards and talk about that. You got these Omega cards. Uh, you have these different set bonuses here. So as you can see, this is a, this Ares card is a set eight. This, I can't tell what comic that is, but this is also set eight. So you're going to get some different set bonuses, two set, three set. As you acquire each uh, card, there's different break points that you get uh, different stat bonuses. This is also getting a two set bonus because this is from set two and set two. You can check out all the stats over here, all the sets, all the stats. You can check out where to get each individual card. So if I like, if I wanted to get this card, uh, it tells you where that you could acquire this if you scroll down there. So uh, you're getting this in car. Uh, if you if you want to look at this card, it tells you where you could acquire this as well. Uh, you could use this uh, as oh, you, a shop and the polluted plane. Uh, if I wanted to acquire this card here to finish out that set, this is where I'm going to acquire that card. So then you can look at the set bonuses for the cards. But yeah, a lot of this is grindy. You're going to there's a way to upgrade them as well. If you go to your own cards and let's say I wanted to upgrade, let's say this card right here. Now, now this is important because your regional pieces of gear they come locked your your set cards your the cards that have these set bonuses they also come locked so we're gonna we're gonna just upgrade combine one of our fodder cards that we're gonna go on level two a lot of these are the cards i don't think you need to save but these sets these ones that have numbers in there i would recommend not uh not at least in their very early stage of the game not not selling or using those to upgrade or using any of them for sacrifice so uh, that is, yeah, as you can see there, yeah, that card got upgraded, got another stat and got a little better. You don't get to control the secondary stats on them. So you do got to get kind of lucky with these Omega cards, but, um, yeah, it's very necessary. Get a lot of Omega cards in the game. All right. This is a potential. So Captain America has a super soldier serum. Each character has their own potential that they upgrade. Now on this level one, as you can see here, you can increase your attack, defense, HP. This is standard for every character. I like doing this. This is just the normal sets. But as you go down to level two, level three, level four, you have different stats 
that are more customized for these characters. So for Captain America on his level two, he has HP, guard damage decrease, HP recovery. On his level three, he has these different stats. So you only get a limited amount of potential. So use these wisely. Look at the stats that you want to upgrade because after you get to level 100, you're not getting a lot of these. You're getting a little bit per week from the Alliance store, but that's about it. Cores, this is a place that you could come and uh, manage them. There's also places in the... A workshop that you are in this headquarters that you could upgrade the course as well and specialization this is a place that you could go and get these uh, anti conversion from the raids and start to upgrade these uh sometimes i'm button mapping is a little weird so when i have that second button on sometimes i can't click on these but there's different stats here that you could equip on these you could equip uh different traits as well so for example this trait that i have equipped Increases the guard damage recovery when the guard is broken. So that's another thing that you want to watch when the guard is broken. But uh, you can sort of mitigate some of these things with the stats here. And uh, each different day, you have different colors of these uh, of these uh, anti convergium that you use for the specialization. There's a green day. You have uh, orange, red, yellow, purple. And I believe that's all the colors. Uh, but yeah, so, so each corresponds to these different traits. Specialization. Towards the end game, after you reach a level 100, a lot of your upgrades are going to be coming from this. And that is uh, controlled very, uh, you, you get to control the progress. Now, sometimes the upgrades can fail. You know, at the lower levels, upgrading level one, it's 100%. As you go to some of those uh, traits that you're equipping, uh, sometimes it goes up to like, uh, this is one of them I'm at not, right now at level five, I believe is a 60% success rate, which means 40% of the time it could fail. So uh, the specialization gets very, very grindy because they, it doesn't always uh, work, but uh, that's something that you want to look at as well. Now, squad power. This is what I talked about. That's the global bonuses that the entire team gets. So Captain America will get that. Black Widow will get these bonuses. Any other characters that I build, any other characters that come to the game will get these bonuses as well. This is your squad rank. As you increase your rank, you're getting more attack and defense and HP. That's what you get uh, as far as that. Now, when you go to squad power, you have these different uh, resources as well. Fury classified data that corresponds to this stuff with the attack. You're increasing the attack every time you equip one of these. Cost gold. And then you're getting these different bonuses at these different breakpoints as well. The one that increases the defense is the Stark Blueprints. And the one that increases the HP is the Pimtex. You're going to get these throughout the game. These are important for your squad. Very, very valuable. And as you can see, the different breakpoints at level 10 for this section here, you're getting more crit uh, rate. For level 20, you're getting more crit damage. Level 30, accuracy. And as you can see, it goes on and on and on. You can see the different bonuses. It goes all the way to level 300, which leads me to believe that the total squad right now is level 300 that you get up to. But uh, that is important. That is squad-wise, and that makes it easier for you to upgrade your characters. Now, for certain missions in the campaign, you're going to need a squad at a certain rank. I believe they start around Midgardia, but I could be mistaken on that. Uh, and you're going to need to have that squad rank up there before you can progress in the single player campaign mission, which means that you're either when you get to that point in the campaigns, you're going to either need to go and build a second character or while you're building your first character, you could be building your second character in the background and you could um, and you could start to work on that so that when you get to that section that you need the squad to have that power, uh, you're not you're not waiting. You're, you, you know in advance what you need. Uh, the squad storage is also something very important. Let's say, let's say I have these potential. I don't want to say actually the potential is a bad example. Let's say, let's talk about these omega points. Every time you're opening stuff in the store or certain things in the store, you're getting these omega points that you can use to purchase some pretty good stuff there. If I wanted to give that to another character, I would go here and I would go to store that. Let's say I wanted to get those back. I would just go here and I would retrieve that. And that is how you could use some of these resources across all of your characters. Let's say I've been working on Captain America for a while. He's the only one that could get some of these anti convergium to increase the specialization. I'm going to store that. I'm going to give it to uh, some other characters that I'm trying to build up. Or let's say I maxed out Captain America already. He's the only one that could really uh, go through these raids very easily. And I want Black Widow to get, well, uh, that, I'm putting it in storage. And you could use that for a lot of stuff as well. The badges we talked about putting that stuff there. You can do that with your cores as well. I got a couple four-star cores here that are not very good in Captain America, but for some other characters that are weaker would be very good. And then you have all your other uniforms here. Now, what I've been doing, I don't know if this is the most effective, but I've been storing a lot of my extra uniforms, especially for Captain America. And then what I have a lot of the extra convergium and stuff to 
upgrade that with, then that is what I'm going to use. Let's talk about offers real quick before we go into some of the other uh, daily activities that I'm doing. Some of the offers, I think one of the best offer that you could get is this Omega Future Membership, 26 bucks. What you're getting is a lot of cores. And if you look at the core per cost ratio of this compared to what it costs just for getting those cores alone, or I keep calling them cores because that's what it's called in Marvel Strike Force. They're called crystals here. So I think this is a good value. Now, not only do you get that though, you get a three to five box. It's Omega Supply Box. You get either a three to five costume Omega card or core seems like a good good value you know a lot of times you're going to end up getting not that much stuff but uh you, you get some good stuff with this now perks you got you got some other uh decent things here uh costume daily tickets omega car daily tickets hero level up some of these are pretty good as well uh based on the crystals that you get and you get some decent things as well uh here some decent badges but uh these these are only unlocked not through daily gameplay but when you reach your he heroes level 80 90 100 pretty worth it for the crystals and if you're already a level 100 you're just going to get all of these as you unlock this same thing for your squad you have another thing here based on squad and there's there's a, a few of these that are good now i do want to talk about these draws because once in a while you will get these cards that you could draw for costumes uh you could draw for more omega cards this is one of those tickets here and these dimension boxes so uh what happens when you get that you get these omega points in global and uh, soft launch, there was no way to really use these right now. We go down here and let me move my camera to this side here. We go to these special tokens. You could use some of these Omega points. So these are very, very valuable. Uh, elite Omega card on a, a five. This regional gear, this regional piece, very, very hard to get. Very low drop rate. So you could, if you could manage to save up some of this stuff, this will, um, this will, this is a good uh, area to get them. And it looks like. Since this is the first day, I'm not 100% sure what happens when this uh, timer expires, but it looks like it switches up. So it's New Stark City right now. Probably is going to be a different region. And there, there's some really good stuff here. Normal tokens, you get these from your friendship tokens. So you could have up to 50 friends in the game. Uh, every time you're going to give these points away and you're going to get these points, you could purchase stuff from here. Uh, Omega War, by, comp uh, by participating in Omega War, you're going to get points. After the every week, you're going to get a ranking. And based on that ranking and the points you get during the battle, you're going to get these uh, tokens here. You could use them as some pretty good stuff here. What I recommend, PIM Research Log. Very, very good. That's going to help your squad power. Your four, uh, three to five Omega card. You got some rare cards in here as well that you could only get from the Omega War. So I'd uh, use that. Uh, battle badges are okay, but I'd probably use it on these because they last for a lot of your characters. Uh, three to five core box. Pretty good. Fury's classified data. That's another thing that will increase your entire squad power. This is going to increase your squad rank. So if you want to increase your squad rank, very good. This anti-convergent box is radiant anti-convergent box. Flawless anti-convergent box shatter. I would buy all of these if you have enough of these tokens because these are very rare, especially uh, because some of these harder raids, very difficult to get this uh, more advanced specialization materials. So that's a good purchase there. And then the Dark Zone. You got some good stuff from the Dark Zone. as well. Battle badges. Always good stuff there. And um, that is it as far as the uh, purchases. Now, as far as uh, what you could do in the store, you got uh, a couple different things. You got your workshop here. And this is where you would go or as far as where you could do in the headquarters. You got your workshop here. This is where you could combine different things. You have different pieces of your... Um, Converge them that you could get. You could combine and get some regional pieces. You get a few of these a day. Uh, very low chance. Very, very low chance. But you do get a low chance to get some of these regional pieces of uh, gear that we talked about. You could increase your uh, enhancers. I don't really use these a lot. I did in the beginning, but don't use these a lot. And then you're to converge them. So you got your unstable particles. You got your stable and your crystallized crystallization. If you don't have enough of these, you could upgrade these. You could upgrade your anti conversion which is used in that uh, specialization as well if you don't if there's three levels if you have the lowest one a lot of them then you could upgrade and get some higher levels of that that's what you do with the workshop your co uh, core synthesizer that is on the other side here and we're passing by this uh, sim the the box there what is it called the uh, convergence box you're getting those convergence tokens by collecting uh, different things different pieces throughout the campaign uh and then you get those uh, different variant times. There's a lot of different things in there. Some good, some bad. This is where you could bind your cores now. At this level, if you look at this, 100% acquire a core of a higher grade. 
That's not always the case. Sometimes you get the same. Sometimes it gets worse. But in this one, because it was 100, we get a better one. Now, if we go to this using all two stars, 70% chance. This is also going to use some of that conversion. So you don't get to choose your color, which is unfortunate. But uh, you get a 70% chance that we're going to get a green or uh, three star. So let's say we get a three star or if it remains a two star. Let's see what happens here. 30% chance it's going to do absolutely nothing. And it does go up. And as you can see, though, no relation to the power. It's just uh, as far as the color, I mean. Just totally random. And the last but not least is this costume augmenter. This is where you're going to go upgrade your costumes. Now, a lot of times when I'm upgrading costumes, I'm using uh, the, the costumes and just, just upgrading some the colors. Because like I said, when you when you go to that color section, it doesn't it doesn't affect the stats. So what I want to do when I'm here, I'm just doing something that I want, and like a costume that I like the visual look of. And I'm just trying to get another color for that visual look. The main ones that you really want to pay attention to are these set bonuses, or not not these set bonuses, this, this one with the uh, regional pieces. You got it locked here. You can't accidentally sell it, which is good. A lot of your higher grade pieces also come locked. So this, this does not need to be locked up there. That's not a very valuable piece, but these regional pieces, I would definitely lock them and do not sell them under no circumstances because they're very, very hard to get. And then we got this costume nano fusion. Uh, this is more, uh, this is something brand new. So this is something that I, uh, have not screwed it. This is something that just, uh, got added to the game. And it looks like we're going through the tutorial here, but I think that is it. That is it. As far as the, uh, most important things to help you get uh, started off, go through the ranks. There's a lot of auto play. And if we go into the, uh, if we go and uh, do a section here, there's, there's a few things that I want to discuss about, uh, leveling up or leveling up your character quickly. With the auto section, let's go into uh, let's go into Doctor Strange here because we've been working on him. We'll go take him into the campaign uh, because forming a party is also very important. Uh, you want to form that party because when you're going through the campaign, anything that anybody in that party does, you'll also get credit for while you're doing that special mission. So if you go to a specific region and you're going to uh, yeah, so let's claim this reward here, and all right, so we're gonna go through that. So a lot of times you can form the party. The way you go to form the party is you go here. When you're in a different region, obviously not in a headquarters. You go into this invite party. Nearby heroes, you just uh, pick someone there. And they're probably doing a similar mission to what you're doing. Now, as far as daily gameplay, uh, I think the most important thing to do on a daily basis is check into your alliance. That way nobody in your alliance is getting screwed if you're uh, not doing everything. Donate into your alliance. Each, each alliance has different requirements for growth. So do that. Uh, operations, this is where you're going to go next. The most wanted, this is something you do on a daily basis as well. Uh, if you want to check the location, you can see this, but you're getting a squad experience. That's going to help you globally. And as you uh, finish all of these targets, some are, some are going to drop uh, better cards than others. The prime targets are going to drop better ones. None of these are prime targets, though. You get to select one of these rewards, gold. You get to select these uh, unstable conversion. Or you get a one to three costume box. I think the best one is to get is this one to three costume box. These are all consumable materials that you get an abundance of. Just by AFK farming, you could get some of this stuff and sell your badges and get converge them and stuff. So I think the, the more rare one is that box. So that's what I would select there. Uh, special operations. This is something to do on a daily basis as well. Helps your alliance. Helps get you points. And you get some pretty re good rewards at the end of the week. The battle challenges. This is something you do once a week. It's kind of like a ladder. This is what you do once per week per squad. So if you've done, already done it for a character, that is uh, that's something you could do. Raids, haven't unlocked it with my Doctor Strange, but this is something also very important. This is where you get all that anti convergium for that specialization material. The Blitzes are is not that bad. As you beat one of some of these bosses in the Blitzes, it'll unlock a stage to the Blitz. Uh, the, after a while, the the one the, that is hardest to auto is going to be Maestro, but uh, lo the rest of these, you can pretty much put these on auto. If you have time, I would do these. And then your arena. You had your dimensional duels. They're kind of like one-on-one -on -one PvP battles. Omega Wars. Those are those big battles, which if you get a good matchup, very, very fun. Dark Zone is where you're going to spend a lot of your time at the end game. After you got into level 100, you're going to be grinding with your lion, trying to kill big bosses there for some good rewards, some good cards, and some good badges as well. So a lot of stuff to do in a dark zone. Now, if I were to prioritize everything, I would go Alliance first, then we go to Raids, then we go to Special Ops, then we go to these uh, 
these blitzes because you could auto these the most wanted you got some good rewards as well but a lot of times when you go to the regions to try to search for these characters uh there's nobody there and there's a lot of waiting around same like the dark zone after that i think these dimensional duels are very uh important the omega wars are very fun if you get a good matchup if you get a bad matchup not as fun but uh that that is the game in a nutshell Hopefully this overview helps you. I know it's a little longer than normal. We're going to be posting all the uh, Marvel Future Revolution content on the second channel, Valley Flying 76. So check out the link there. Hit the subscribe button. Let's try to grow that channel and get that thing monetized because I want to put all the videos on Marvel Future Revolution. What we're going to do later today is take a look at all the patch notes, all the differences between global launch and now or soft launch and right now and discuss that. So Check that out. Hopefully you subscribe to this channel. We got more great Marvel Strike Force content on this channel. And then hopefully you subscribe to the Valley Flying 76 channel for Marvel, more great Marvel Future Revolution content. Thank you guys for stopping by. I will see you guys next time. Give me that Hulk fistment before you go. And have a great rest of your day, guys. Valley Flying out.